Okay. The person handling beefs. Oh. Okay, okay. Thank you. Um, so guys, welcome back to welcome back in shorts. This week was this week started out good, but then um towards the ending of the towards the ending of the week, things um started becoming very, very um uh, shady, you know. Things didn't really, really um work out the way they should because we took some losses. I personally I took some um losses on some currencies that we didn't analyze very well. I know for a fact that we didn't really really analyze it very well. So that is why I'm saying that we did not analyze it very well before jumping in. So we are going to just go over those currencies and then um you know review what we did wrong and then what we did what we should have done right so that is what we are going to do i'm going to just do so we have this um key level here we have this um uh, inverted head and shoulders which the market made um in 2016 there about 2015 2016 there about this is a monthly time frame by the way and then we um in December, the market broke above the key level. We had around 187, and then it went all the way to 200k.000, and then it retraced from there. Now, we are currently settling um, on that level here. This is a key level, around 187.724. This is a key level. So, to my greatest amazement, we're waiting for... We're all waiting for a third touch of the trend line, which I drew somewhere around here. If I'm not mistaken, no, not here, not here. which I drew somewhere around here. Which I drew somewhere around here. We're all waiting for the third touch of this trend line. Was it how I drew it? I think I drew it. it was just like this. Yeah, it was like this. So we're waiting for the third touch, first touch, second yeah. touch, and then we're waiting for the third touch around this area. But then um I went over after I took that loss, after we took that loss, because I took the trade with um some people. After we took that loss, I went over and then I reanalyzed. I went to the monthly time frame to see what the monthly time frame was saying and lo and behold we had the market made uh this inverted this normal head and shoulders which dropped the market all the way to the downside and then rallied all the way and then ever since we broke above this key level because if you are plotting um your key level the you shouldn't plot your key level on top here because you are looking for the places where we have most touches in the market, which we definitely had the touch here, another touch here, and then we had another touch here before the market broke all the way to the upside. And then if I extend this, if I extend this bar to the left, you can see that we have countless touches there. We have countless touches there, which indicates to us that this area now is a key level. It's a very, very strong key level, which is what I saw after I took um, that loss in the market, which is what I saw after I took that loss in the market. So coming down to the weekly time frame, we had the market pulling back to um, this area here. And then we also now I've drawn this um, trend line very, very well. And you can see that it's matching accordingly to what we had from the retracement we had from this place. It's matching accordingly and then area bit from here to here we have about uh let's say from here to here we have about 1200 pips which is 1200 pips to the upside so for next week we are going to be waiting for for next week we'll be looking out for candlestick patterns before we will enter this market to the upside again because i'm still hoping that um, if you look at the yen basket 
you look at the yen basket we also have uh we also have similar thing to what we are seeing on the yen basket we also have similar thing on the monthly time frame let me flip this thing back so you can see what i'm telling you so we have this key level around here We have this key level around there, or you can equally draw it to this side and then extend it up somewhere around there. We have this key level around there. You can see how uh, why I mentioned this level as a key level because first touch here, second touch here, the market should come inside here and then give us some sort of um, rejections to continue selling. And then if this is selling, then we'll be targeting this loose back here. And this is about um, 1,500 pips downside. So this is what we are currently looking at um, on the yen basket to continue buying on GBP, JPY. If we are going to continue buying on GBP, JPY, then the yen basket should give us that um, sort of rejections to sell on the yen basket Why we capitalize on what we have on, on GBP, JPY. So from next week, we should be looking for some rejections from this area to buy back to the range that the market has built up. Because if you are looking at this area now, this area now is now a fake out in the market. This area now is now a fake out because it faked out of um the major level. We had 200.000. And then it's never retested. So we are looking at the market to go back into the range that has built up for the past um, weeks. So this is what I, I did over, over the days after losing that money I lost from um, buying this currency around this area here, buying it around this area. So... From now on, I'm going to be expecting some sort of rejections from here. Meanwhile, this area still stands as a, a fake out, a, a fake out in the market. This area still stands at as a fake out in the market. So this area still stands as a fake out from here to here. From this level to this level, we have about um. Uh, we have about two, we have about 1,200 pips to the upside. So if we are looking for an entry from this area, we should be looking for an entry from this area to buy from this area to the upside. But first, you must wait for some sort of confirmations. Like let's say um, the, the four hour time frame has to give us that confirmation that yes the market is ready to go up for our time frame has to give us that confirmation maybe double bottom or inverted head and shoulders or inverted head and shoulders to then buy at the the higher low we will potentially have in the market before we enter I'm not just I'm not just going to jump in immediately i'm going to wait for the market to give us that rejection from this area, then we'll buy. Remember, we are following what the weekly and then the monthly time frame has told us. We are following what the weekly and then the monthly time frame has told us. We have this key level here, this key level here. And then if I extend this to the left, if I extend this key level to the left, you can see that it's, it's a very, very prominent um, key level. Um, given that we had some rejections from this area, rejections, 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 rejections. So we are looking for um, at least three touches on this key level. We are looking for at least three touches on the key level before we can um, capitalize from it. So from next week, we are going to be expecting some sort of correctional waves to continue buying this market back into this range that has built up for the last 
for the last couple of days we have in the market. So do we have any questions? None, none for now. No, no. none for now. Thank you. Dave, are you back? Yes, I am. Ah, welcome. Thank you. Stanley, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You haven't been You didn't welcome me. I welcomed you now. I welcomed you. <laughs> ah, so it's only when you hear Dave you're happy. Now no, wow. No, no, no. no, no. At all. Ah, now wow. Hey, mm. no, it's not like that. Remember, I'm the I'm the only woman here. Yes, Me yes. Welcome. Welcome. Please, everybody, welcome her. Huh? <laughs> welcome, ma. Welcome, ma. <laughs> thank you, sir. She, thank you. Thank you. I'm only teasing. I'm only playing. No problem. No, that was good. I will just keep, I'll just stay in the trade. I'll just stay in the trade. Maybe I'll top it up on Monday. Okay, so that 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 was what um we didn't really see before going into that buy. How do you mean that I knew that this market was going to drop like this? This is a lot wow. of pips, guys. This is a lot of eh? this is one thousand. <laughs> this is a lot <laughs> of. I didn't mean I knew that um this key level was here two hundred point zero zero zero. And then we had this fake out above. The market retested. It did a little retest. If you go down to the four hour time frame, this was where the trend actually changed. Where we started making um this um the break, the trend changed to being bearish. So had you been I knew that this was what was happening, would have just capitalized from this up to this level. But then this is after you've uh, made some losses in the market that uh, the market will now sit you down to for you to reevaluate yourself and then look at what you did wrong for uh, for future purposes. So this is what I am currently um perceiving on um JBP JPY for now. If we have any questions, please ask. Remember, we're not going to be entering this just without confirmation. Uh, waiting for the four hour time frame to give us uh what we have seen here just like this for the four hour time frame or even the one hour time frame the one hour time frame will be for that sniper entry but i'm not i'm not into all those sort of sniper entry i'm just going to wait for the four hour time frame to give us a convincing um chart pattern or even candlestick pattern to buy to this level here yeah, back into 200k so from here to here is about 1200 pips to the upside so that is what i am going to be expecting the next currency i want us to look at is actually um gbp jpy gbp jpy next currency i want us to look at is gbp jpy so from the monthly time frame from the monthly time frame, the market retested 103. The market retested 1.30,000. Um, and then um, what we actually had from the weekly time frame. Okay. What we actually had from the weekly time frame, um, we, we had this resistance level. I'm coming let me extend this to the left so you can see that it's a very very strong resistance level we had this resistance level here resistance level remember this area also is this area also was a fake out that happened in the market which retested um one one point thirty thousand besides that we had this resistance this is first touch second touch third touch um fourth touch and then fifth touch now the market broke above which gave us that pin bar the market sold from here i traded this market last week which i sold from here to around this area here I took my profit so was waiting was actually waiting for the third touch of this trend line which i later on saw something saw something which happened in the market we had this resistance level here and remember, I told you guys that the market always seeks um, liquidity. So I noticed that we had this resistance level here. The market broke above and then came back to 
close down below this area again, which potentially now this area is now a fake out that has happened in the market. Coming down to the daily time frame, the daily time frame has portrayed um a very very vital information about what we saw on the a very very vital information about what we saw on the weekly time frame. So looking at this, why I yesterday I was talking to Dave about this. We wanted to sell at the break of this trend line, but then he said we should wait for a retest of this resistance level before we sell, which I actually um yielded to what he said. I was waiting for a, um, a retest of this resistance level before we start selling from this area down. Before we start selling from this area down. But because it's Friday, we are not going to sell because we don't know what to will happen when the market opens and then if you look to the left we had that similar pattern here the market broke above came back retested and then sold off um over 700 pips to the downside so this is what i'm currently looking at we have these lows here which we have seen the market um act on for the past months so now we have retested this previous resistance what i'm going to be um expecting for next week is for a continuation to the downside so a continuation to the downside to this level here for gbp usd so a continuation to the downside to this level here and if you look on the four hour time frame if you look on the four hour time frame we actually had the break of this is a this is a this is a this is a bearish bearish uh continuation to the downside. We actually had the break of this, which we saw the market retest uh, after after that the market collapsed all the way to the downside. So what I'm going to be expecting, like I said, is for this to continue selling for next week. And then I don't think this trend line is going to hold the market for next week because of um what I have seen from the higher time frame retesting this level here one one point thirty thousand retesting that level here so if that happens then we should sell off to we should sell off to this area here we should sell off to the previous area of um support here the previous area of support here the market should sell up to this level here. Yeah. So that is what I'm expecting for GBP USD for next week. That is what I'm expecting for GBP USD for next month. For next week. Sorry, do we have any questions? No, sir. Okay, no questions. Let's let's move on to the next currency pair I have. The next currency pair on my list um uh, Yes, um, pair on my list. Um, uh, actually, for good. After, I told you guys I was going to take profits. I took my profits around this area because the market started consolidating. Remember, we executed around this area, added positions here. Took my profit around this area. The market started consolidating, which made me to take my own profits from the market because I didn't like the way the market was looking. Took my profit around this area and look at what the market did after nfp the market came right to take out uh some early buyers some lead buyers from this area so for good actually i don't have any buyers for now because the market doesn't really look good um uh, 
if you look at this area, you can see that the market has come back to the previous area of resistance. This is a previous area of resistance, which the market broke. The market came back. So from next week, we should be expecting higher highs from this area. The only instance where I will have something to do on gold is if the market um, comes here to break above the previous area of resistance we had here. If the market comes to break above this area and then we, the market um, also breaks above 2.5. The market also breaks above 2.5. I'm going to be waiting for um, the retest of the Fibonacci level we have here. So this is what uh, usually happens on for the Fibonacci level. This is what usually happens. I'm coming, let me clean up this so it will look nice for us. ABC. I want to clean up the chart so it will look nice for us. So we are looking at this area here. You remember the market is still bullish. So A, B is equals to, A, B is equals to, C D A B A B is equals to C D. So we are still looking at an overall uh direction to the upside. This will still be our target. We are still looking at an overall direction to the upside. For now, my bias is still uh bullish. My bias is still bullish on good. So we retested the previous area of resistance, which I'm still looking for a convincing um continuation to the upside so coming back to the coming back to the area which i marked previously coming back to this area on the 4 hour time frame we should continue buying gold from this area again we should continue buying gold from this area again which practically it has given us that um continuation to the upside so a so a b is equals to c d our profit target should be around 2535 but for me i'm going to still wait for a couple of rejections from this area before we continue buying to the upside this this um if i'm buying from this area now my stop loss is going to be wide very very wide because my stop loss has to come um down below this week and i don't have that much money to risk i don't have that much money to risk on this particular setup so i'm just going to wait for a couple of rejections around this area maybe double bottom to then buy from this area are you guys getting my point on good yes, please are you guys getting my point on good Yes, sir. Yes, I am. Yes. Yes, sir, I am. Okay, okay. So my my bias still uh my bias is still to the upside, but for now let's just wait for uh, proper rejections around that area. before we continue buying to the upside. Okay. The next currency pair we should look at should be GBP card. the same thing I'm actually seeing as uh, actually what the yeah GBP cards a very very simple setup yeah. though, though I didn't mark out um this too the network is bad
So this is what I'm looking at for GBP card. If that happens, then it will be a very, very um, nice setup for us. Now we have um, retested this area, but for now we don't, we don't have any confirmation yet, uh, simply because the market hasn't given us the M pattern or even uh, inverted head and shoulders to continue selling to the downside. So we are still going to wait for the market to give us that convincing, uh, that convincing pattern to sell this market because it is a complete. This is a very very simple setup. This is a complete change of trend. We had the markets consolidating around this area. The market broke um, all these structures here. The market broke all these structures to the downside. And whenever the market breaks a structure, it normally comes back to retest it before the continuation to the downside. So this is what I will be looking at for. And then if you draw your Fibonacci from the last high the market made, so the current low the market has made, you can see that is um still playing around the golden zone here. The market is still playing around the golden zone, but that shouldn't be a a, a guarantee for us to shorten this market until our criteria are met. Uh, until our criteria are met, the M pattern or even the inverted head and shoulders to then continue um selling to the downside. So this is my own bias for GBP card for next week. Any questions? No, no questions for now. No, this was actually what I wanted to share, but since you've done it, I think you've seen my mind already. Okay. Please, what of the others? No question. Last time I checked this guy, it, it was in a resistance. So if he should be forming this at the resistance, it is proper, sir. So All no right. question. All right, no problem. Um and then for Euro USD, actually, um I shared this with I shared this with um Dave. I actually went long on Euro USD, but then I went out because of NFP, I didn't want to jeopardize my own account. Charlie went long around this area here. My target was my target was this high. But then if you look at um this area, you can see the same thing we had on uh the same thing we had on GVP JPY. We look at this area. Sorry, I didn't plot my levels. This area is say uh, is 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 a previous area of resistance. So from next week, we should be looking at um corrections to the downside. We should be looking at corrections to the downside for the market to come back and then fill up um this these weeks before we can say the market uh will continue buying from this year. But I highly doubt because if that happens, then that would change my bias for even GBP USD, which I just spoke about. But from next week, we should be looking at corrections to sell for the market to come back to fill up the imbalance we had around this area. Because definitely there will be stop losses around this area for the market uh to for the market to come out come back and then take them off from the market. So from next week, we should be looking at corrections to the downside on Euro USD. Then the next currency is um AUD USD. For AUD USD, we didn't really have anything that happened on AUD USD. Uh, NFP didn't move it. It was just stagnant. NFP didn't move it. So I'm not going to talk much on um AUD USD for this week. Nothing much on AUD USD for this week because NFP didn't move it. But then, according to what I'm seeing, please talk. Kicks. Sorry, I was going to say, why does NFP move some currencies and some currency it doesn't? Because I would have thought, because NFP relates to 
the US dollar, it would have affected this currency. But it affected GJ. I'm just I'm just curious. Uh, for me, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the news guy. I'm not. Okay, okay. No, no, Allah, no, okay. Allah. And from what we're told when we're learning that we should avoid um trading NFP because no, we should, we should. Because um those those bad guys, the big boys, they tend mm -hmm. to, they tend to manipulate prices very very well. Like for mm -hmm. the yen currencies, even without the NFP, it has been moving mm -hmm. since this week. So we don't really know what is happening. Mm. It has Sorry, moved. somebody wanted to say something. Yeah. Dave, was it you? Please, we wanted to say something. I think nobody okay. wants that stuff. Okay. All right. No problem. Thank you anyway. Thanks. Yeah. So for um let's say for um uh, AUD USD, nothing really much happened on AUD USD. But then if you are looking at the trend, the uh exactly what we we are talking about, the fake out above here, if you come down to the daily time frame, you can see that. The market made um, this fake out above here. So we didn't really retest it. And then if you are looking at it, we should be coming back here from next week to retest this area before we get that correctional wave to the downside again. So if 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 I'm to say we should not trade this market um for next week, we should just wait for the market to do its thing. You can see that. I've drawn this area. Uh, if break above, yeah, please talk. Dave, do you have a question? No, no, no question. So if if we break above this area, then we should be looking um at ADUSD coming back into this area to fill up the gap before we see a correctional wave. To the downside. So for now, AUDUSD, I'm not trading it for now, simply because the market has moved a lot, and then we are expect some uh consolidation around this area. If at all it's going to go up, or uh, is is just going to continue selling. Expect some correctional waves to the upside. Look for bearish. Look for bearish pattern. Let's say. We have that correction. We look for bearish pattern. Then after the break, we sell back um uh, into the range. Yeah. So for AUD USD, that is all I have for AUD USD. The market is a bit messy now. After we had this bear uh run from this area down to this area. So that is just it. I think this is the last currency we are looking at okay we have usd um, jpy usd jpy is the same thing we had on gbp jpy from the monthly time frame here's the jpy from the monthly time frame uh, i think we i think the the the, the trend lines we drew from last week were all perfectly wrong i don't know for but for some strange reasons none of them were respected uh, so for um usdjpy also looking for uh, um, rejections around this area looking for rejections around this area to continue um buying to the upside looking for rejections around this area maybe uh, the market might want to take out this low here the market might want to take out this low here take it out and then do market might want to take out this low let's go down to the daily time frame the market might want to take out this low here Take out the low, do the fake out thing, 
and then close back up again to do the fake out thing and then close back up retest and then continue buying but for the yen currencies you should be looking at the upside for the yen currencies for next week i'll be looking at the upside for the yen currencies for next week we'll buy back into 155 we'll buy back into 155 thereabouts yes from here to here is about 865 pips from here to here it's about 865 pips so just expect um um the should be expecting for the market to do some sort of rejections around this area maybe a fake out fake out then close back up i, I will be pers i will personally be monitoring this market once we do that fake out because we have these previous areas here support support market should come back and then take out uh this um lows here then close back up to continue buying to the upside i'll personally I'll, I'll be monitoring this market personally to see if we have the exact thing i just said to continue buying back into the range that has been built up for the past um, weeks so that is just it for us tjp one okay yeah please do you guys have any questions before i hand over the screen to my brother no questions no questions for now okay no questions but I hope it's clear. Is there any other um other currency we should talk about? Well, I don't know. Maybe uh let me share my screen. So in case you have any questions now, we can take it out. Like um, if you have any um I, I will analyze the currency. You want me to analyze then i will hand over the screen to dave anyone yes i'm listening the aud card what did you say aud card oh god australian I've, canadian dollar i've not opened this i've not opened this um uh, this was this was in 20 this was when i started trading this was how i used to mark out uh, my own charts i've not opened this this particular pair in a very very long time now so for aud card plotting key levels uh zero point nine k and then we have six ninety two zero point ninety two k coming down to the weekly time frame let's see what the market has done so the weekly time frame we have this um little resistance around this area which i'm just going to use this box to mark it out So actually, for AUD card, we should be looking at um longs for next week. Pain bar weekly time frame. We should be looking at longs for next week, which I highly recommend. Um, you should wait for the entry moves, which I always talk about. It's a very very nice setup. Um, uh, to trade. For some strange reasons, AUD card moves 
um differently AUD cards uh AUD card moves differently from GBP cards they don't even move the same at all if AUD card is going up GBP card is going down so for this week we've closed our spin bar and then if you are looking forward to trading this you should I advise you don't enter at the don't enter traditionally, which traditionally is always above. Enter at the 50% retracement as you would love to put your own um stop loss below the pin bar. You would love to put your own stop loss below the pin bar, which is um roughly about 60 pips. You'll be targeting this highs here. We're targeting this highs here. This one one. And then this one too. Targeting this high set. Yeah? Let's 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 see something. Yeah, so perfectly. This will be your own first level take profit for this. Remember, your own um partials should always be at the 50% retracement, which is um somewhere around there. At the 50% retracement, which is somewhere around there. So you are looking to entering this market you should enter it um you should enter it at the 50 percent retracement but sometimes the market usually don't do that the market will just um open from here and then continue going up but i advise you to just monitor the market I advise you to just monitor the market let's say on let's say on the four hour time frame on the four hour time frame you are looking at um a break. You are looking at the market to break this high here. Let's say the market breaks this high and then comes back. Then you use your Fibonacci from here. From use your Fibonacci from the last low the market made to the last high, and then you enter at this level here. You enter at this level here because this will mean this will mean a break of structure. This will mean a break of structure for the market, breaking above this structure and then breaking above the structure. So if the market does that, break and then come back to retest, then you buy from here. You buy with confidence from here. You buy with confidence from here. Your target is always at this previous high, the market media. You buy from here and then your stop loss will always come right below here but 25 pips is very very small you have to give your own um, trade you have to give room for your trade to breathe so your stop loss should come right um below here 61 pips is very very okay for you so your take profit will be here take profit to be here don't get greedy and uh, simply because the market is going to go up doesn't mean the market is just um going to go in a straight form the markets will move up, down, move up, down before it finally um, reaches its own destination. So to my own advice, just take this into consideration. But for next week, uh, looking at um, you should be looking at longs for next week, which is a very, very um, simple one. Remember, uh, just wait for a break of this counter trend line. You wait for a break of this counter trend line or the other scenario. Wait for the market to make a new high. Then at the um, higher low, you now enter the market together with Fibonacci and then together with trend line to continue buying to the upside. Hope you understand, Stanley. You get my point, Stanley? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, that's good. Uh, uh, can we look at Euro GBP because I, I saw some certain things. Okay, just open it so that I can just. So Euro GBP, okay. Euro GBP on the monthly time frame. Um, there was a time I was also saying that uh the markets after breaking down below the eighty five level here. After breaking down below this level here i was saying that the first retest we had um isn't really a good um one because the market has been stuck above here 
since 2022. Market has been stuck above here since 2022. And then looking at this, this shouldn't be a yardstick for this. This first retest shouldn't be the yardstick for the market to continue selling all the way to this lows. I remember saying this, but for some strange reasons, I am still carried away after I do um after I do uh, multiple analysis on a pair, I was still carried away. So for now, the market has come back to retest. The market has broken above the 85,000 level here. For now, I don't have any bias on Euro GBP as it concerns. And then if you look here, you can see that we also have a structure here. We also have a structure around this area here which the market has come back to retest the double top we had on the daily time frame. The market has come back to retest double top and also a previous area of resistance. If you extend this to the left, you can see that this level is a well-respected level in the market. But for now, I don't have any bias simply because we have other, um, and other better opportunities to trade. Okay, thank you. So we have, uh, sorry guys, we have better opportunities to trade this. Sorry, we have better opportunities on other pairs than this particular one we have here. So just know what you are trading so you don't lose your money at the end because I don't want to lose any money this coming week again. I don't want to lose any money this coming week again. This was this was a complete downtrend after the break. We're waiting for the market to create a new low. We're waiting for the market to create a new low, but the market didn't create that low. Instead, it came here and then gave us multiple rejections, multiple rejections, and the market started going all the way to the upside. I closed this trade. I closed, I didn't take any loss on this trade at all. I closed this trade when the, I closed this trade somewhere around here, just before we had this spike. Let me just show you guys where I closed this trade. I didn't have any loss on this particular trade at all. So the market broke down here. I waited for the retest after my stop loss was way around this area here. After the market gave us, uh, after the market dropped all the way to the downside, market went up. I was still in loss. The market came back, closed right above, closed right um, below this area, this trend line. And then I started noticing some um, bullish momentum on this pair. This was where I now closed back the market with around 0 0.12 cents. I closed my 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 trade on Euro GBP. I didn't even trade it again because it was looking so confusing and then the consolidation was becoming too much. So I had to just close it while I, I was still in profit on gold and S&P 500. I was supposed to talk about S&P 500, but we don't have much time. Let me just hand over the screen to the next um the next um person that is going to share their screen. So is there any other currency pair? Any other one, guys? No, no, no. Okay, please. Dave, you can share your screen. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Seems my network is bad. I don't know. It's coming up, sure. Okay, so Mr. Eddie talked about um GBP card. 
I also have the same bias on this. I have actually marked out this level on this consolidation here. I was hoping for maybe a proper retest of this region. Then we would see how it would go. But I'll be waiting till next week to see how price would react to that area so that we can probably take a sell downwards because this would be a very nice setup. Like Mr. Eddie said, down to the next low of this trend line because there was a trend line here. Let me check on my one day time frame. Since my network is bad, I don't know what's wrong. Okay, so this is the daily time frame from this first touch, second touch. So there was a touch here, so a consolidation, and we are hoping for that retest of that consolidation because it broke out from that retest. This was the breakout. So it's probably going back to make a nice retest, then give us a selling confirmation, then would sell down to the next touch of the trend line, which should be around this level. I think this is about... 200 plus pips if potentially we catch this trade. So this is what I've been looking at already on GBP card already. Then what I have next is um, GBP CHF open chart. Well, I, I noticed that this, this trade from the weekly time frame is actually on a long term has been on a long term downtrend. So let me let me show you from the weekly time frame. From the weekly time frame, I saw this pattern. I think this is like a W here, here, and here. And also this is of this from the weekly time frame. You can see this all we can do was the breakout down below. So I came down to the daily time frame. I came down to the daily time frame and I drew this trend line and there was a breakout. So I was hoping for price to probably come back maybe next week to retest in this inverse of this head and shoulder pattern for to retest it or retest the trend line then we could continue for itself but well, i'm not sure of it's retesting the trend line but i probably feel it should come back to this level where i set this price alert then maybe we'll take a short sell down to this end of this trend line or to the next low here so i think this wouldn't be a bad idea but we'll just wait to see how this would play out next week. So I think okay, I took a I took a buy on this I think last week. Also I think this week rather. I think whether this week Monday from this area. I think uh, that was about one fifty pips. I took a I saw this pin but I think we did it on the last Zoom call. This pin bar, the last cell here. Are you guys hearing me? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, I'm hearing you. Yeah, yeah. My network seems very bad. Okay, so immediately this candle closed 
this last one here, I just set a buy limit at this level. And I took my profit here before the NFP news came out. That was about 150 pips of profit. So I also set a buy limit here at this level to, to pick the trade. But unfortunately for me, it did not pick me on my live account, which would have given me about maybe 300, another 150 pips now to this level of consolidation here then probably from here the trend might go as normal because it's in an overall downtrend so that was all i did for the week that was the trade i took for the week and i think gbp usd no no sorry not gbp usd usd card but it did not go as planned i think what I saw was US, what I saw on the USD card was a resistance on the weekly time frame. Okay, so this was what I saw on the weekly time frame on USD card that was making me want to buy. There was a resistance here, level one, two, three. I think here is a fourth one, and this is like the fifth one. So I took a buy around here on the daily time frame, hoping that the NFP news. <laughs> I just risked about 50 pips or so, hoping that the NFP news should push it to break out that level. But it didn't. It didn't. So, and already on the daily time frame, I think this is a pin bar forming. So, I don't know. Let's see how next week would go. This was the, the range it was for a while on the daily time frame. It broke out from this range but did not make any significant retest of this trend line and entry from here for a buy signal but if by next week this breaks out from the resistance zone it breaks out that means we'll just have to wait for a full back to retest that level and that go for buys. Let me share that again. Okay. Let me share that again. So I think if by next week we have a proper breakout of this region, we'll just be expecting a retest back to this resistance level. That would be resistance stone support. Then I would probably be taking it long to the next level of like one four four thousand. One four thousand. Or you want four four thousand. Which should be about like maybe five hundred pips or thereabouts. So I'll be looking out for this next week. A break above and a retest for a buy, then I think GBP card also, which would not be bad. So then let's see GBP AUD. I've been waiting for this to actually come down to this back to this level here, but it's been really really bullish. But from the daily time frame and four hour, there has been lots of consolidation. My network is not aligned to function well, though. Don't know what's wrong with this. 
Okay, so from this daily time frame, respecting a retest of this level before we can go in for a long to the next probably high here. So I don't know, there's consolidation here from the four hour to there has been lots of consolidation. So we still be expecting maybe by next week it should probably come down to that level. So I think this is all I have for tonight. I don't know if that was okay, but I'll be really looking on GBP CHF and GBP card as potentials for next week with GBP USD. GBP USD for bank. hello, is it GBP USD? For buy or no, sell? I said I'll be looking for GBP. You mean GBP USD? Yeah. GBP USD. I should be looking for those on GBP USD. You be looking for what? Sales, sales on GBP USD. Okay. Yeah, and GBP card. I'll be looking for selling opportunity to again and GBP CHF. So I'm looking for a retest of that trend line for selling opportunity. Okay. Yeah. So that would be all. All right. For thank now. you. Thank you very much. Um, does anyone have anything to share again? Anyone? No. Okay. So um I have some write up I want to share with you guys so that you can also like this is what I follow. Number one is trust your edge. It doesn't mean uh if I call out any trade, it doesn't mean um you should take that particular setup just because it's coming from me. You should also analyze before you jump in. Um I could be wrong. You can correct me because nobody is perfect in this market space. It's just that um sometimes we get carried away um uh, by um what we think we are by our own ego. We think we know it all. Um sometimes I'm like that. Sometimes I tend to listen if I if I am corrected. Let's say I see a buy on GBP USD and you see it, so you could tell me that look is um look at what I'm looking at. Why don't you like look at it the way I'm looking? But don't try to convince that person. Just tell the person that this might happen, this might not happen, you know. So just trust your edge, number one. No to fundamentals, number two. The reason why I deleted the uh, the news uh, group in our groups is because that is causing um, a havoc. We shouldn't be looking at the news. As we are technical traders, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be looking at the news. That doesn't mean you shouldn't um, check news events that we have. Definitely, we know that every Friday, every first Friday of the month is NFP. And we should consider that also before we trade. If you are not running in profit already, you should close your trade ahead of NFP. Number three, be happy with the little profits uh, you make. Then number four, follow your own bias. Just like the first one, trust your edge. Number four. Follow your own bias. Number five, follow your own rules. Number six, the risk, the risk um to reward matters a lot. It doesn't it doesn't really mean if um the trend is uh bullish, the risks um to reward matters a lot. Imagine if you have a risk of hundred um dollars and then a reward to make over one thousand dollars. It's a very very good. Um, risk to reward so that is very very important number seven number seven is everything matters before you trade let's say um the the trend is telling you bearish and then you are going against the trend everything matters you have to consider everything the chart is telling you to do i know sometimes it's very hard to look out for um whatever the chart is telling you to do until you've taken a loss then you, you go back to your chart and then you you say um you would have taken that buy instead of the sell. So before you enter any trade, you should know that everything matters. 
before you enter any trade. So number eight is um you have to place your own exit point. You have to place your own stop loss. Stop loss is very, very important. I took one um foolish loss one time when I was still learning how to trade because I had open stop loss. It's not good. It's not good at all. Open stop losses are not good. And then your strategy, you have to commit to this tree, exit point, stop losses, and then your strategy, you have to follow it um, very, very well. And then um, number eight, develop the unconscious stage. The unconscious stage is trading without fear. You trade, you place your trade, and then you close your laptop with confidence that, yes, um, the trade is going to go uh, to your own direction. It doesn't mean you are moving the market, but then you have done your own part. It's not left for the market to stop you out or move um, to your own big profit area. And then you just have to um, develop unconscious stage in order not to be conscious in the market. Because when you are conscious in the market, you tend to fear. And when you fear, you fear or you fear losing that particular position and you know what happens when you are in fear when you are in fear you either lose or you get um, stopped out so this is all i have just make sure stop loss is very very important and then the risk to reward is very important trust your edge don't look at the news as if as a technical trader look at the news sometimes but then don't hope that the news is going to push your own bias just analyze make sure you are following the trend the um, the daily time frame daily time frame is very very important because the daily time frame will tell you what the market is going to do for the coming days and then follow your own rules follow your own rules your own rules are very very important so that is just it that is what i wanted to share to you guys i hope this night was a, a very very good one for us yeah yeah thank you yeah does anyone have anything to share please do Okay, if anyone, if um we don't have anything, then we'll call it tonight. Thank you guys for joining today's session. I'll catch you guys on Monday. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, good night. Thank you. Good night, sir.